can still hear me? Yes. All right, welcome y'all to Art Meet Kumba. So Kumba is a day of creativity under the wands of holiday. Kumba means to always do as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited. I actually think we should switch mics because I'm, I'm sure they're not gonna be able to hear me. Not Hello. There we, Much better. there we go. Maybe it's because this one isn't for the mic. Okay. That one's for a guitar. There. Good luck to you all. Run that back. Una back. Una back. All right. Run, Mr. Selecta. My name is Josh McCoy. I am the senior business strategist of the Love Art Collective, and I'm here in partnership with Visionary Acts. So we have Darius. So if you would introduce yourselves quickly. Uh, my name is Darius Johnson, CEO and founder of Visionary X Multimedia Production Company, and I'm with the SECC team. My name is Tiffany Alicia. I'm the founder and president of Black and Brown Wall Street, but more importantly today, I am the executive director of the Springfield Creative City Collective. Hello, I am Ariane Stewart. I am the owner founder of C.HR Services, and today I'm here with my SECC team. All right, and as a quick overview of the SCCC, we are a coalition of economic development stakeholders focused on the transformation and revitalization of the Springfield creative and cultural economy. Through sustainable and culturally proficient initiatives that interconnect advocacy, racial equity, social justice, and professional development, as well as strategic investment. So today, we are in the art meets section of what we do on the Love Art Collective. So today is art meets Kumba slash Kwanzaa. Kumba is the sixth day of Kwanzaa and it's all about creativity. So Kumba means to do always as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited it. So I have three people on this panel today and we're gonna ask them some questions about creativity in the black space and what it means to them. So we've already done introductions, so I'll get right into the first question. First, how do you self-identify? You can go race, cultural identity, or professional identity. Please. Um, I'll go professional. Uh, you know, definitely, I'm an artist. Uh, I'm a photographer, videographer, graphic designer. Um, just an overall multimedia creative. Keeps me even down to my, my actual first passion was sketch art, so I've done that for like the first 15 years of my life, and I still do it to this day. But I just, I'm a creative first. Uh, I, I love to create, I love to service to the people through my art, mm. um, and, under, and understand the impact that art has with people, um, just as a human interaction alone. Um, Speak power, <laughs> and, even, and even just the aspect of how art even comes, it, it comes from triumph, it comes from tribulations, uh, good, bad times, uh, any of those moments allows someone to be able to express their art in the way that they have. There's a lot that you just said in there. We will get into that a little bit later with more questions, right. but I'll pass it along. Thank you. Um, I think I identify the most as a lover of Springfield. And I say that because that's the basis of a lot of my decisions. Like, whether it's when I'm teaching, I'm a dance coach, I'm creating businesses, doing events, um, raising my kids here, like it's because I love this place so much. Um, within that, I'm a creative, I'm a community organizer, um, I'm someone that I believe stands for truth and service and justice. <laughs> um, but yeah, for the most part, I just love this city and I, I, I go hard for the city. Sure. Gotta love that. Awesome, all right, so I will describe myself um, professionally. I do HR, I love doing it because for me, I really enjoy business. I love the challenge that comes along with figuring out different business issues and strategizing, but also that human side of it, working with people, um, making sure that they have the adequate things that they need in their jobs, so they can be successful with their families and their loved ones. And shortly, I'll just say what I am. I am a fool because I will try anything and believe that I'll do it great. So I paint, I now in photography, I'm clearly a host tonight and we'll see how I'm doing today with that. But uh, that's my professional identity. I am a try it man. So yeah. if you need something tried, I'll let your boy. You look like a renaissance man. Right. It's the hat. <laughs> it's got everything. Let me, uh, 
get a little bit lower. <laughs> so for this <laughs> next question, right. like I, want, I, I would like for y'all to answer me this. Where does your creativity and racial cultural identity cross one another? And are there clear delinea delineations between each? Can you repeat it? Yeah, one, one more time for the people in the back. Black. Where does your creativity and racial slash cultural identity cross one another? And are there clear delineations between your racial identity and your cultural creative identity? I think in that aspect, it, de it depends on which, which way of creativity I'm going towards. Like for example, I would cross over my self-identity, my cultural identity, along with my work, uh, like when we did the march, uh, going down to the police station. Mm. Like that's a prime example of me advocating for what I am, who I am, and allowing the art to be able to speak for that. Oh, look at, look at greatness Yay! walking in the building. My comedy yeah, stand out truck. Shout out, guys. <laughs> so, but there's also times where race and and cultural identity doesn't necessarily have to do with what I'm creating. It's just more of what my mind was able to build, what my mind was able to put together, and what I saw an in inspiration, and I wanted to see what I haven't seen before. Because it was a quote that I've seen, uh, it, it was on Facebook, but it was just like, if there's something in the world that you haven't seen, do it. Yeah. Power. Um, I, I think at the point of my life, I am right now, I have strategically made them together, like forced them to be together. I feel like I, my identity as a black woman, as an Afro-Latina, as a Caribbean woman, first generation American, um, and then my creativity, uh, before I gained my confidence, before I gained my own authority, I had to keep it separate, right? When I'm working for all these mainstream organizations, they don't they don't want all this blackness. They don't I definitely can't show up looking like this. Oh, so <laughs> so beforehand I, I had to separate it. But now I feel like I've made space, whether it's in black and brown Wall Street, SCC. Um, teaching at the social justice school that I teach at where my culture and my creativity has now become one and I believe I'm going to keep it that way um, because specifically because I'm making my roots here in Springfield I'm gonna be here for a while even when I leave this is home and if you don't know Springfield is majority black and brown 65.6 percent it's more now so I feel like I could stand in my power and my culture and my authority and not have to separate it from my creativity here so I, I think this is my most authentic self and I'm going to be keeping that way for a little bit just a little bit you know I feel like for me it definitely crosses over quite a bit like my creativity if I think about like the Black and Brown Wall Street type of events, uh, New Year Better Us. Um, some of the events I did before that was about self-care and all of that, like I feel like that's really how I'm able to show my creativity. Um, and I do feel like that is how I identify also with black womanhood. And for me, you know, where I grew up, I felt very disconnected. So for me, it's been about creativity and also how can I build this network, this family, sisterhood. Um, and give people what I wish I had when I was younger as well. See, so keep the mic on you. I'm just going to ask you this question, roll right into it. How does your adjacency to blackness affect your creative outlets? So you just started talking about that. Yeah. So give me a little history on what it was mm -hmm. when you were younger and then how you feel now in your profession and the things that you do creatively. Yeah, I didn't grow up necessarily with a lot of um, black women figures so as far as like people to look up to um, and I think for that reason like when I got into like being more creative and like doing these types of events I wanted to create space where I could speak about my experience and I could also hear people speak on theirs um, and then like stuff like even like the pink party yeah you know that was an opportunity to really hear like some of the different hardships and also positive things people have went through and how it's built them built their character we also shared like music and poetry and that's kind of how it all came together mm. no it's perfect um, I have, I feel like, two experiences with my adjacency to blackness. So, um, I was born in Hartford. I moved here when I was seven years old. Hartford is, even though it's so close, it's a lot different than Springfield. Mm. The place that I'm in is 
all Caribbean Americans, all boop, first boop, generation. Boop, 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 boop. Like it's you can't go down the street without spending I said our rice and peas. Like it's it's in your face. And that bled into our schools, that bled into our events, our programs. And so in Hartford, and I say that because my parents still work there and all that, it really felt like there was no adjacency. Like you are black, you're black, you're black. When I came to Springfield, I feel like as I excelled, the rooms became more white. So whether I'm working at the YMCA leaders or YMCA youth in government or uh, even at the health department when we were interns, like as I excelled, it was more white. And so I feel like it being black was on the side. Like you can see my skin color. I'm definitely getting the awards because partially because I'm black. I'm definitely getting pushed out front because I'm articulate and black. Um, so now after, now I have a little bit more control over what I'm doing, now I'm blending the two so it, it's not adjacent, it's just together. But growing up I had one experience in Hartford where it's, everything's black and then I had an experience at Springfield where a certain level was black and then you surpass it and it was no longer black. So now I feel like I'm trying to create spaces where we can consistently be black at the highest of levels of excellence. That is such a hard question to answer, and I'm gonna let Darius do it now, and then I'm gonna add a little bit on it. Okay, I'm gonna try to answer it the best way I can. Do you um, think? So I think in the aspect of because how I was raised, I didn't, I wasn't necessarily raised in like a black neighborhood. I was in East Springfield, so it was kind of like a mix of white, black. Unless you're in Putnam Circle, that's Puerto Rico. <laughs> that's Puerto Rico to the T. But outside of that, um, I, I I think as I've grown to just learn through knowledge through my teenage years and into adulthood. I think I, because of where I wanted to be and, and just in black rooms or just black excellence or just excellence in general, it forced me to guide myself into certain rooms and connect with certain people and gain new clientele mm. and, it, and keeping myself in that aspect and finding ways to scale in that aspect. Outside of that, this, there has been businesses outside of being black that's, that's helped me in tremendous ways, whether it's clientele, whether it's like Lavelle uh, Springfield, mm -hmm. which is also um, uh, interconnected with the community and impacting the, the missions that we're doing as well. Yeah. But overall, and where I feel like whatever attracts me attracts, but I, I know that there's a bigger mission than what um, the Black and Brown Wall Street has, and I feel like that mission is what's connected to mine too. That's a perfect answer. I really don't even need to say anything, but I am just gonna add a little bit of salt. So here we are. In my own experience in adjacency to blackness, I felt like in educational attainment that people really wanted me to be black because they felt as if I spoke really well and I could represent people who were beyond them and that they could connect through me to blackness. But in my creativity, I find a yearning for blackness. So when I create, I want it to be for people who don't understand things that I'm creating, but for them to be connected to. So I find myself finding more African American visages, visages and then things that I want to represent in my artwork and then feelings that I had when I was younger so that other people can see it and then continue to move on to that and then attain things that are high profile art or, you know, photography at a higher level or just portraits of people in their natural habitat eating a honey bun sack in their pants still because yeah. <laughs> we're in 2023 almost but you know it is what it is I, I think one thing I'll add to uh, one thing I'll add to that is um, I think it's important that uh it's so crazy because as a press and it's not just black people but as oppressed people we often uh, carry the burden of having to uplift our own oppression, right? And I feel like the same thing goes in when we're trying to define what blackness is, especially when we're beating back all these stereotypes, all these different things. So um, while some of us do take have the, uh, make the decision to take on that fight, I will also say I do believe it is important that a part of our freedom is just existing, right? So we don't necessarily have to always carry the burden of saying, okay, is this what I'm creating black enough? Is this idea black enough? But no, because I am black and because I thought of it, it is black, you know? And that might stretch what we now believe of what blackness is. Like I hate when we think about black art and we always have to go to something graffiti or something that's nonsensical or, you know what I mean? I believe in my heart of hearts, a part of our freedom is that because we are black, anything we produce is also black, even if it's not familiar to what you think blackness is. Mm. And that is such